Hey guys, it's David from TheUnlocker.com and today I'm going to be showing you a quick walkthrough of Color OS, which is Oppo's custom UI skin that they put on top of Android on their devices. Okay, first let's talk about the lock screen. Um, it is basically the standard Android lock screen. It does have a few aesthetic changes. The way that it looks is just a little bit different. Um, it does have the slide to unlock, face unlock, pin, password, all the stuff that you're normally used to. Um, one additional feature right here is the air unlock. So that does, whenever you're on the actual lock screen, it does not work if the screen is off. It's only if you're actually looking at the lock screen, you can swipe your hand over to fully unlock the device. In addition to that added feature, we also have double tap to unlock the device. Um, and also a set of actual blank screen gestures that you can go in and change the predetermined gestures. For example, the double tapping on the screen, you can make it do something else. Uh, drawing a circle will launch the camera. Uh, and there's a few other ones, drawing an M, a V, and you can actually assign them to different actions. Another added feature to the normal lock screen is the voice wake up feature. Uh, similar to the Moto X, um, but you can actually say a phrase that will get you directly into Google Now. So it's not quite a customized voice navigation, it just opens that, which then you can start talking and do other stuff. Uh, the By default, and I'm not sure if you can change it, I can't find a way to change it, even though it looks like it should be able to be changed, is, hey, Snapdragon. And sometimes it doesn't actually start uh, the voice command in here, so you'd have to tap, which kind of defeats the purpose. That brings us to the actual home screen or the launcher. Uh, at the bottom here you have the dock, which is basically your standard Android dock with five icons, one of them in the middle being the app drawer. Pinching is part of it, so you can pinch outward to get to all of your home screen, which is different than tapping and holding like in KitKat. Swiping around here kind of works the same way as a normal home screen until you get all the way to the right here and you have a photo pane, basically. And this is something you can't change any of these widgets. It's always this camera thing and this little timeline doohickey. Um, and then it also changes the dock down here at the bottom to be four specific things that you can't alter, which is the camera, the gallery, the app drawer, and then this, which you can customize the four icons in there. Um, but this essentially is when you tap that, you can take a picture and it basically spits out the Polaroid underneath. This only happens when you're using this widget. If you take a normal photo, it doesn't show up here. It's a little odd. Um, you can turn this entire pane off so that it doesn't show up at all if you'd like in the settings. Also, there's another one besides photos. There is also music, which you can tell is music because it's got this giant record player at the top. Uh, tapping that allows you to play songs if you have any directly on the device. No, it doesn't work with streaming services like Spotify, etc. You can also swipe through here. Uh, to get to the next song or pull the record off. Uh, and that's pretty much it. You can't do anything else on this screen. It does also change these bottom icons. You have the phone, for some reason, uh, the music, which gets you to all of your music, the app drawer, and again, this customizable kind of pull-up drawer from the bottom. There is also uh, a thing called effects. This basically changes uh, the animation in between switching through panes. So you can have the standard one, which is just normal like this. It also affects your app drawer, or you can also have tilting, which kind of just tilts it, makes it a little cube-like. And again, does the same thing here. And finally, we have vivid mode, which basically just rotates all of the things within the pane instead of the pane itself. And again, does the same thing in here. Also, if you go into your app drawer, you find a theme app. Uh, this allows you to download custom themes that are kind of already have uh, app icons and backgrounds and other things like that built in. Local theme means ones that you've already downloaded. Online theme means you can go through all of these and they're all free and download them from here. There are quite a few. Um, not sure of the quality, but there's quite a few. And then personalize, you can also change the wallpaper. You can also change the uh, lock screen theme as well. Bring us to the status bar. Uh, pulling this down one, you get all of these quick actions. There are 15 of them, I believe. Uh, and you can get quick access to things like you're used to, Wi-Fi, mobile data, uh, lock the device right now, which is essentially the same thing as pushing the power button, uh, your brightness slider, etc. And then all of your notifications appear beneath here. You can also um, pull this up 
to get more room for your notifications. And we have uh, the gear up here in the top right to get to your settings. You can also customize certain things about the status bar. Uh, that includes turning on a battery percentage or turning it off. And then also carrier information. So you can have the carrier icon, the carrier name, or hide all of it. Some other notable features you go into settings are things like a guest mode, um, which allows you to actually put in a, a specific pin that if they enter it into your normal password tray, uh, you can uh, make certain contacts, photos, and videos, and even applications all private and they can't access them. We also have quiet time, which allows you to set um, basically for when the device is going to be on silent mode. So for example, when you're sleeping and you don't want to be disturbed, you can also uh, set certain contacts that are allowed to get through even during that time, for example, emergencies, whatever. Notification Center uh, allows you to actually control which apps are allowed to show you notifications and which ones aren't, which is kind of neat, I guess. And Data Saving Mode uh, actually allows you to do something similar, but control the background data for each individual app. So you can set apps that are trusted and it'll only allow those ones to use the background data and other ones it'll cut off, which supposedly helps you save data costs and possibly also battery. Then you have a permission monitor. Uh, now this is kind of neat because in a way, Android handles permissions a little weirdly. You have to say, I agree to all of the permissions for an app as soon as you install it. Uh, unlike say iOS that actually asks or the app asks as it needs it if you want to give it to it. For example, if you need the GPS, it won't actually uh, have you agree to that until it needs it. Uh, so you can actually say yes or no, depending on which features you want an app to have access to, instead of having to say yes or no to the entire app as a whole. This, I guess, tries to fill that gap a little bit. You can actually go in here and by permission, turn apps on and off and allow them and not allow them to use certain permissions. You can also go in by application and kind of go through it backwards as well. The last real notable feature uh, that is a change from stock Android, because this is close to stock Android, um, is gestures. So you can actually turn this on and pull from the right of the screen instead of from the left to get your normal status bar, you'll get this gesture thing. Uh, and you can draw on this to essentially launch different applications, make it do different things. You can also go in here and create your own uh, so that you can have basically an infinite number of these, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can also do screen off gestures, which I kind of mentioned before. These are like the double tapping, tapping to wake up the screen, drawing a circle to turn on the camera. Uh, and there's a few here that aren't assigned and you can also change what these ones do as well. Uh, there's also in application gestures. Uh, so if you turn this on, depending on what app you are in, you can draw certain gestures to be able to do things within that app, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then it also does have these communication features, things like flipping the phone over to mute incoming calls, uh, easy answer, whenever you just pick up the phone and put it near your ear, it will automatically answer the phone instead of having to push a button. Uh, and then we do have other things like activating the camera with a pinch out, we'll open that as well. And we even have some system ones, um, gesture screenshots, you can swipe three fingers to take a screenshot, adjust the volume with your two fingers up and down, uh, and some other things like that. So it's kind of their way of adding a few of those, you know, those S5-ish kind of features that we're used to seeing on Galaxy devices into their setup as well. And there you go. Kind of giving you an overview of all the software changes and the differences between it and Android uh, stock. So with that out of the way, uh, stay tuned for the review coming soon.